Making major progress with the 997 turbo chassis swap. Today I need to work on the engine and that involves, well, diving deep into a Porsche engine, which I've never done, so that's a little scary. I also have to drill into it and tap into it. Yeah, but it's a common problem that these engines face, which I need to repair. I didn't do it on my 996 turbo because I never had that engine out. And this is an engine out job. And when you're swapping chassis, well, the engine has to come out. If you're not familiar, multiple Porsche engines are notorious for coolant pipes coming out of their sockets. Basically, from the factory, these metal coolant pipes are simply glued into their respective housings. And after years and mileage, they can come loose, causing massive coolant leaks. Now, there are numerous ways to fix these. You can take them out, re-glue them, put them back in using a different type of glue or epoxy that's stronger. You can pin them in place with screws that are tapped in, or you can weld them in there. Now, whichever way you decide to go, it's not an easy job. Obviously, the engine has to come out. And even with the engine out, it's still a large job. Now, I'll show you the way that I chose to fix it a little later in this video. And what's really great is there's a way I found out to do this basically for free. And I think anyone at home can do it. So I'm gonna work on that but first. I need to do some more tearing apart of the old chassis and some more swapping of parts to the new chassis. So let me knock that out quick and then we'll work on the engine. This is normally the part where I would show you removing the old harness and associated parts in the front end, but I had a major video failure. Well, it finally happened. After all my years of using GoPros, I've never had this. I just recorded a ton of stuff. Granted, they were all time lapses, but still. No files to import. Watch when I disconnect it. SD error and it won't let me attempt to fix it or anything. It said the only thing I can do is format it. Absolutely ridiculous. That's so incredibly frustrating because I just, I, I mean, I lost hours of footage. Anyway, here's the harness completely removed, which was captured on a time lapse. So just picture in your head me removing this with some cool 80s vibe music. Getting the front wire harness installed was relatively simple and straightforward, but again, order of operations. I didn't remember exactly where everything went, and I should have taken more pictures, which we'll dive into a little bit later, and you'll see why. I had this massive long wire hanging there, and no idea where it went. It's going to take me a bit to figure that one out. But other than that long black and yellow wire, the trunk area is pretty much wrapped up. That doesn't mean there's not more wiring up here, though. With that done, the final wiring harness is installed in this car. Not fully, obviously, there's some things I have to plug in, but that's it. <laughs> the wiring harnesses are completely swapped from the crash car to the non-crash car. Now I need to take care of this 
Big mess right here. Yes, these are the wires that need to go underneath the car, but over top of the gas tank, but the gas tank is already installed. I'm hoping I can sneak this stuff in there and get that stuff plugged in and button up this front end. If you'd like to get your own Anchor product, go to the link in the description box and you can use discount code ANCHORTB for 20% off. Big thanks to Anchor for sponsoring this video. And again, check out the link in the description box for your discount. So I have to sneak some wires through that tiny little hole above the gas tank and over to where the fuel pump sits. And this was another instance where I had it all recorded on a time lapse, but that video is gone. So you'll just have to believe me that I was able to sneak it in there. I used some hard wire as a snake and was able to tape the fuel pump wiring on there, pull it through, it was not that difficult. Thankfully, I didn't have to drop the gas tank. So in the last video, I posted asking you guys where, where this goes, and I'm recording this before I release that video, so if you answered me, thank you. But I just realized, so this is the cover, right? This looks like a regular cover, right? Well, there's a connector on the back, some kind of module. Obviously, that's what goes there. There's, there's just nothing else that will go there, but that makes me happy. Whatever that module does, we got her figured out. Well, it'd be helpful to put the actual clips in there from the old car. These guys. Mystery wire solved and I'm one step closer to finishing up all of the wiring. There's the clutch line and sleeve cylinder. That car being an automatic, um, didn't have a clutch line. I'm also not sure how this slave cylinder works, so I'm gonna have to research that. Or if you know, comment below, it'd be helpful. Remember how I said I couldn't figure out where this black and yellow wire went? Look, I'm just gonna say it. I didn't take nearly enough pictures. Definitely didn't take near enough pictures. I actually had to look at an old video to figure out that this goes up near the firewall and behind the brake booster. So of course, some parts had to be removed to get that into position. Now that you guys have answered that question, can you answer this question? I know that this is the microphone, but I don't remember taking this off. I feel like it fell out of somewhere. So if you can tell me where this goes and where this mounts, that would be tremendously appreciated. Finish getting all the stuff out of the crash car because, well, I wanna get it outside. I wanna get the non-crash car over here in this bay. That way I can put the 996 back inside because it's been sitting outside for a few days now. I would prefer it stay inside, but we're almost there where this thing can go sit outside. Perhaps after today's video, this thing will be completely stripped and I'll be done with it. I think I just have a couple of AC lines to run up in the front and then I can put all these wires out into the fender wells where they belong and then this is finally done up here. This has been so much work just this front trunk and front cow area. There's an incredible amount of things that go into this up here. Now I wanted to prep the front end for the radiator, condenser, fan, horns, bumper, all of that installation. And of course, since you didn't see me remove it, that's because it was lost when my GoPro decided to fail.
Now what I did here and I thought was a pretty decent idea, I wanna disassemble the least amount of AC lines as possible because that's less places that there's a chance that's gonna leak later. So keeping the front two radiators together with the AC condensers and stuff not disconnected except for where they mount to the body. I think it was the right move and it's not that heavy, I can shift it over there. What I absolutely love about Porsche's design here is the radiator, the ducting, the fan, all of that is condensed into one, but you can still remove it as a whole unit. Imagine trying to take everything apart on this and installing them individually. That would be a huge pain. Radiators mounted. Well, except for the middle one. After getting the driver's side AC line installed, now there's some room to route those cables through the fender well. Now we can move on to the rear of the car where some upgrades need to be installed. Now moving back to the rear and I gotta get the parking brake cables in their specific spots and I need to install the shifter cables. And they're not OEM shifter cables. You guys who've watched all the videos should already know. If you didn't know, this car came with brand new inbox numeric shifter and shifter cables. Really excited to get these installed and feel them out. much snap in the place everywhere by the way if you're enjoying the content a like or subscription goes a long way thanks guys line installed, parking brake lines installed. First, I actually need to get the old grommet out of the old car, crash car. Oh, it's already out. <laughs> cool. This is the guy I needed. Uh, and I think this too, even though that comes with insulator stuff, things. I should put this on after. I don't think there's any way to slide it on, right? There's no way to take these ends off, so I'll have to cut this all the way down. Okay. Gotta lube it up. Just so you're aware, this grommet is a really, really tight fit and not easy to get in there. That's for sure. So close. is one fully installed grommet, motherfuckers. If I wanna get the approximate length of these cables right, I need to at least set this thing in here. Well, I wasn't that far off. Eat, oof, holy Hanukkah. A little bit too much. I know I'm gonna freaking bash my knuckles off something. 
This is just to get the approximate length so I can put the, uh, the insulators on there. done. Cables are in. That's a win. Now I think, and don't quote me on this, that's everything in the rear I needed to install before the engine goes in. I think we're now ready to drop the engine and transmission in here, get it plumbed, get it wired, and ready for its first fire up. I would like to do a deep cleaning back here first though, but we'll see. Since the rear is done, we gotta finish the front. And I still can't get over the fact that this has the OEM center radiator along with all the OEM ducting and everything. This is like a factory part and it's already on my car. How cool is that? does not seem right there with that hose. It's definitely not up high enough. It needs to be it needs to be way higher. Oh it's gotta go above the horns, not below it. That's my bad. That's my bad indeed. I installed the horns on top of that coolant hose where they should have been underneath it. So I gotta pull it apart and do some flippy floppy in and just like that it's on top where it should be. Not time for install. That's better. Now let's get this third radiator installed. Now the reason I was so hyped on this third radiator is, if you're not familiar, these cars only came with two radiators, one on each side of the front bumper at the corners. The third radiator is an upgrade, and I assume the guy did it because this was a track car and it provides a lot of additional cooling. It's just a good upgrade to have. With those parts installed, I think I can call the front end a wrap. Really just needs a front bumper installed on there. So many brackets and electronics and modules and wiring that go in each fender well is really more complicated than you would think. Wheels and tires off so I can get into the fender wells and install more modules and do more wiring. But that's not all going to happen today. I don't have time to quite finish that up. We have to move on to the more important things a little later in the video, which is, well, drilling into my very expensive engine. Oh, and I need to get that bungee cord out of my front coil spring that's stuck in there. You see, when I have a properly working camera, I can show you guys the disassembly. Yep, 
totally forgot about that. Got wedged in there whenever I uh, let the suspension compress. Whoops. I had to clean up the garage because this next project is a big one and it's a scary one. But look at how empty my Ziploc bags are getting. I'm dwindling them down. Now there are going to be a good many extra bolts and nuts just because I had two chassis and there were still a lot of nuts and bolts in the non-crash chassis. You guys know I can't stand it when it's dirty, but this whole garage is, is still a mess. I can't wait to get this one chassis out of here. But now into the meat and potatoes of this video, let's move on to the engine. Let me show you the parts that I got to make this more bulletproof, hopefully. Oh, I almost forgot. You guys were right about the seat belt, how it's locked. I thank you for all the feedback. A lot of you guys are like, well, it has to be oriented the correct way. And you are absolutely correct. So I think it's... I just had it, I swear. There it goes. So the rear seat belt works just fine. It's just like you guys said, it has to be oriented the correct way. That's awesome. I love learning from you guys, so thanks for the tips. But speaking of the seat belts, obviously the driver's side front has to be sent out because it's completely locked. Won't go forward or backwards from the crash. Now, the question is, you guys know I love my terracotta interior, but the question is, you can have a black seat belt, which in my opinion is fine, but it's rather boring. I love how newer vehicles come with colored seat belts. Even the brand new Colorado ZR2, you can get yellow seat belts in. That's freaking awesome. Accent colors are tough with a terracotta interior. So my thought was terracotta seat belts and then paint the brake calipers terracotta as well. The other option is keep these black, but do some terracotta stitching or get like a chalk gray seat belt to go with the terracotta. Let me know your thoughts. I really, really am torn and I need to get these sent out ASAP so I can get the interior wrapped up in this car. But now onto the important stuff, the engine and the parts I need to unbox to work on the engine. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I was gonna skip this on the engine. I really was. Everyone said on my 996, oh, you gotta fix the coolant lines. You gotta fix the coolant lines. You may be right. They may pop someday but I, I try not to fix what's not broken, especially when I'm repairing an entire car. But you guys are right, the engine's out of the car, I might as well do it now, and what I found out that you can do it without disassembling the coolant lines themselves, without welding, without re-gluing, I figured it only makes sense to do it. Some of you guys may have guessed this, but what I have here are some M4 screws, a drill, and a tap. Probably should have got a couple sets of these drills and taps because I often break drill bits. And the recommended thread locker. So if you're not aware, basically disassemble the engine enough to have access to all these coolant lines, drill through the coolant lines, tap the coolant lines, and then insert screws with thread locker. It's really about it. I mean, I'm sure it's easier said than done, but that will lock everything into place, and hopefully I won't have any coolant issues ever. This is the better way to do it, in my opinion, because I wanna be able to do it myself, and I don't have the proper tools to remove the coolant tubes without damaging them or reinserting them. Now I do have a TIG welder that can TIG weld aluminum, but I have little to no experience with that. And I am not going to take on the risk of ruining parts. Basically, I'm not confident enough in my welding to weld these things. But even if I was confident enough in my welding, I don't know that welding is the way to go on these because you have to have an absolute perfect weld with no pinholes, which is easier said than done. So I think the drill and tap and screw method, I think it's just the best method. So let's get started. I'm not even sure where all these coolant tubes are yet. I know there's quite a few of them though. Well, holy shit, guys, it's already done. I don't even have to do it. I mean, on one hand, I could just fake it, say that I did it to you guys, put it on a time lapse and make it look like I did it, but I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I, I did waste money on that, but a drill and a tap and screws you can use really at any point. Plus, I mean, it was $23. But man, every single point that I see, it's got the screws in it already. It's already, the exact thing I wanted to do is already done. And I know you're gonna make fun of me and I should have checked this before ordering the stuff, but I figured this engine hasn't been out. Like, why would this have been done? Now it all makes sense. Well, because of some other things that I found. You guys saw me with the slave cylinder earlier, which is obviously not a stock slave cylinder. And you can tell this bracket is not stock. So this has the hydraulic assist deleted 
for the slave sonar, which is awesome. And it's got some type of aftermarket clutch. I can't tell which, but it's, it's not stock. And one more thing, it has the metal elbow off the oil cooler back here, not the plastic ones. So I don't know if this was an upgrade or if the oil cooler is upgraded as well, but this has like, this thing's like bulletproofed already. This is freaking awesome. And I know what you're thinking, Matt, obviously all this stuff has been done. It was a track race car. Well, yeah, sure, but you can track these things stock and I didn't think the engine had been removed. So now that I'm thinking about it, I'm guessing they pulled the engine to do the coolant line pinning and also did the clutch and the slave cylinder and everything else at the same time. This is awesome.